Hello, hello, a very, very good morning to you and welcome to Wednesday. Wednesday, yes, Wednesday of Birmingham Tech Week. My name is David Glenwright. I'm the head of training at JC Social Media and I'm really excited to be here at Birmingham Tech Week and sharing with you some thoughts, tips and tricks to help you guys unlock Instagram for your businesses. I said this is part of a series of online uh, talks and presentations uh, from some fantastic leading tech experts across Birmingham and me as well. Um, all part of Birmingham uh, Tech Week, which is presented to you in association with uh, Tech Nation, the West Midlands Growth Company and the Department for International Trade. Birmingham Tech, we, hopefully you've uh, already checked out some of the fantastic uh, events and talks that are going on. And none of this would be possible without the uh, the help and support from the Birmingham Tech Week sponsors. So a big thank you to all of those who have come together uh, to bring this, uh, this week together. And of course, Birmingham Tech Week isn't complete without the partners, a whole host of uh, partners uh, have all gotten involved uh, to make this week possible. If you haven't had a look at some of the other events that are happening, if maybe you heard about this particular talk uh, on social media uh, and you haven't seen what else is happening, then please do go to the Birmingham Tech Week website and check out all of the talks that are happening. There's a full program of things going on today and of course throughout the rest of the week. So yeah, please do go and check it out. Good morning, everyone. We've still got a few people joining us. Good morning to you. Really good to see you. We here at JC Social Media are, of course, really excited to be part of Birmingham Tech Week. This is my second year being involved. Uh, last year, slightly different circumstances. Uh, we were able to meet uh, physically. And last year, I, I gave a talk about Facebook advertising and using Facebook as a means to create uh, engaging, compelling adverts, reaching out uh, to your audience. A lot's happened in the world generally in the last 12 months, but a lot's happened on social media as well. And I mean, if it wasn't already the main kid on the block last year, it certainly is now. There is a huge focus uh, and a shift from a lot of marketeers around the world and they're re-evaluating uh, and readdressing their social media strategy and thinking about what their primary platform is for their business. Which social media platform should they be using the most? Historically, for a lot of businesses, this has, of course, been Facebook, but increasingly so. And I find my experience as a social media trainer, when I go out and meet uh, companies, I'm seeing this happening more and more. There is a shift in focus and attention to Instagram. And that's what today is all about. Over the next 45, 50 minutes or so, uh, I'm going to be sharing some of my thoughts, my experiences, uh, and my top tips to help you use Instagram to really drive your business. Perhaps you've not even considered using Instagram before for your business. Perhaps you're a brand new business and just starting to settle into the world of marketing. Uh, or perhaps you've been using Instagram for a while now and you're wondering if there are ways in which you can get more out of the platform. This session is designed to help all of you and help you start thinking about using Instagram in different ways. We will have some time uh, for some questions at the end. So you'll see the chat box uh, just to that side. No, that side. Over on that side. If you do have any questions, uh, please feel free to drop them in that chat box. and I'll be able to see them as they come in and I'll answer those questions at the end of uh, the session. Feels like I'm doing a lot of advertising uh, before we jump in, but I do just want to give one last uh, shout out to uh, a program that I'm really excited and proud to be part of. And a lot of the content that I'm sharing today has come from that program. This is a program called She Means Business. She Means Business was established by Facebook a couple of years ago uh, as a program and as a means to provide uh, support, educational resources, 
and community forums and discussion opportunities for female entrepreneurs and women looking to start and set up and grow their businesses. Facebook is, has been really keen over the last few years to support this growing, uh, this growing sector and, and, the, and they have provided a whole load of resources that are available completely free, completely free resources that are available. And if you go to uh, enterprisenation.com forward slash she means business, you can find out a bit more about uh, that program. There's a whole host uh, of talks, resources hosted by Facebook accredited trainers. I'm really excited to be one of the over, one of about 25 uh, Facebook accredited uh, trainers as part of the She Means Business program. And you can see we have all sorts of talks and presentations coming up. So if you head over to enterprisenation.com forward slash She Means Business, you can find out a bit more about some of the other talks, workshops, meetups, clinics that are happening. And these workshops and these clinics, they cover everything uh, that you will want to know about Facebook. And when we talk about Facebook, we don't just mean Facebook, the platform, of course, we do include Instagram in that. Instagram being a platform that's been owned by Facebook since 2012. So a lot of what we're gonna be talking about today has come from uh, Facebook directly. So using Instagram as a business, using it as a way to reach out and to engage with your customers. It's not necessarily what Instagram was originally created for. I think I think anyone who has kind of been using Instagram for a long time, for more than four or five years, will recognize that there has been a shift in the tone and the attitude and the way in which Instagram is used. Historically speaking, Instagram has very much been focused on the individual user, the individual person using Instagram as a space to express themselves creatively, uh, to share imagery that reflects them and their lives, a place for people to find inspiration and to meet like-minded people from around the world. Over the years though, we have seen an increase in business tools becoming available and more and more businesses exist on Instagram in almost a slightly separate way. The way their profiles are constructed are slightly different and more and more tools have been made available. And we're going to look at some of those this morning. Uh, but more and more tools have been made uh, available uh, to businesses to help them really achieve whatever their business objective is, whether that is to generate new sales, to raise awareness, to increase footfall and visitors, whatever your business objective is, there are tools out there to help you do that. But before we start looking at that, we do need to consider the way in which most people still use Instagram. The majority of Instagram's one billion users are individuals, personal people, who have got their own individual personal profile. The way in which people use these profiles, though, is very different to Facebook for many of them. Now, this isn't the case all the time, but for many users, uh, Instagram is a very different space to their Facebook profile. For most people, Facebook is their, their home space. It's a very private space. Only their friends and family can see what they've said, what they're doing, what they're up to. And it's a space where basically their, their life is mapped out, holidays that they go on, uh, family gatherings, baby photos, life events. It's all kind of almost documented on Facebook. And Facebook is actually, when we go back and look through our status updates and the things that we post on Facebook, it's actually a pretty good reflection of our life as a whole. Instagram is ever so slightly different because Instagram is for most users public facing, meaning that anybody can see content. And indeed, any of you today could go onto Instagram and have a look at my profile. Feel free to follow me uh, at Old Man Glenners, but only if you're interested in one particular thing. And this, I think, is kind of one of the biggest things that differentiates Instagram from Facebook. 
whereas Facebook is a space where I kind of document my life and my general goings on and I talk about every aspect and facet of my life, my Instagram profile is very focused. It's very tailored. It's very focused on one particular aspect of my life. For me, that is my passion, my interest in craft beer and real ale and the world of drinks. That's a particular passion. It's an interest of mine. I'm an organizer of beer festivals. Um, but it is just one part of my life. But if you were to go onto my Instagram profile, you'd be forgiven uh, for thinking that I almost permanently have a bottle of beer in my hand. I don't, but my Instagram profile is very focused in that particular niche. And that's what I use Instagram for as a consumer as well. It is a space where I explore that particular hobby, that particular passion. Now, I'm not saying that everybody does this, but there is definitely a common theme. A lot of people have an Instagram profile for a particular purpose, or at least they certainly set up their Instagram profile for a particular purpose. It might be that they're using it as a food diary as they go on an exercise uh, regime or a, 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 a new diet. It might be they've bought a camper van and they're documenting how they renovate their camper van and go on adventures. It might be they've taken up knitting or some kind of other craft activity and they use it as a way to showcase what they create there. People on Instagram tend to focus on particular individual areas, which means that we have very active, very engaged communities around these topics. So one of our goals as a business is to identify those communities depending on what we do as a business, what our industry is, identifying those particular niche communities and engaging with those people that actively use Instagram to talk about that, whether that is fitness or clothing, fashion, real estate, whatever it may be. We'll look in a bit at some other ways uh, and things that we can do to help us to identify those communities. But the important thing to say is that Instagram has evolved beyond just a place where you go to see pretty pictures, to be inspired, to look at nice things. Instagram drives actions. Instagram drives results. 83%, 83% of people you have discovered new products and services through Instagram. 81% of Instagram users have used the platform as a means to research new products or services. And 80%, 80% of Instagram users have used Instagram in some way to help them decide whether or not to buy a product or a service. People make purchase decisions based on the content that they see on Instagram. So as a platform to influence and to drive sales, Instagram is an incredibly powerful tool. And I think this is somewhere, uh, something that businesses are really starting to, to open up to and to explore. They're using Instagram as a way to really drive results. I've worked with a lot of businesses where historically, if they've had an Instagram account, it's been a fairly casual, relaxed space, a way in which they kind of just document what life's like in their office. It kind of showcases workplace culture and not much else. But we can do a lot more. We can do so much more with Instagram. We can use it to encourage people to purchase to encourage people to make inquiries, to visit our store. We can drive results through Instagram. And that's what I'm going to be showing you how to do, or certainly just introducing you some tools, bits and pieces that might help you to achieve that. First things first, we need to make sure we have the right profile. We need to make sure we have the right uh, the right account set up. 
we need to make sure that we've converted our Instagram account into a business account. Now, this is a relatively new thing, and you may have already done this. It could be possible, it could be uh, that you have already done this, and if so, that's absolutely fantastic. But Instagram actually has three different profile types these days. Vis uh, visually, they kind of look the same and you access them, you manage them in the same way as well. So it's different to Facebook in that respect. With Facebook, you have your personal profile that you log into, and then that profile is then the admin of your business page. That's not the case on Instagram. All profiles, whether they're personal or business, are created equally, you log into them directly the same way. So you don't have a personal Instagram profile serving as an admin of a business Instagram profile. That's not the way it works. It's more akin to Twitter, really, where you just log in straight into your account. I say there's three different types. You've got personal Instagram accounts, which are designed for individual personal users. You then have business accounts, which are designed, unsurprisingly, for businesses. And you then have something called creator accounts. Now, these are designed for people who are influencers or aspire to be influencers. So they are personal, it's their name, it's their face, but they use Instagram to promote other businesses, uh, to engage, to, to behave as uh, an influencer and to, to cultivate big audiences like that. What are the differences between them? A lot of the differences are kind of in the, in the back end. Um, by having a business profile rather than a personal profile, you give yourself the ability to view analytics and insights. And this will give you detailed information about how many people are seeing your content and also some audience demographics about your followers. What are their ages, their genders, their locations? When in the day are they most active on Instagram? So a business profile gives you access to all of that information. It gives you access to uh, advertising, on Instagram, so the ability to run paid promotions and paid ads on the platform. It also enables you to connect your Instagram account to your Facebook page, which could be used either to do something with what we call cross-posting, where you post uh, to Instagram and it automatically goes through to your Facebook page as well at the same time. But it also means that you'll be able to uh, reply to private messages on Instagram, reply to your comments on your Instagram posts, all of that interaction, you'll actually be able to do over on Facebook. And I'll show you how to do that in a bit. So it makes the back end management a lot easier for you. And it also gives you access to some other uh, features designed to help uh, e-commerce and product based businesses as well. It doesn't cost anything to convert to a business profile. All you need to do is when you're on Instagram, on your phone, uh, you need to go to your profile, uh, go to the menu on the right-hand side, the settings, uh, uh, yeah, go into the main menu on the right-hand side, tap settings at the bottom, that'll open up your settings uh, menu. You go to account, scroll to the bottom, and you'll see at the bottom the option to switch to a business profile or switch to a creator profile. If your options are switched to a personal profile or switched to a creator profile, that means you're currently already set up in your business profile. So whichever one of the three isn't there as the options, that's the one uh, that you currently have set up. It will ask you to connect to a Facebook page. Now, this doesn't automatically mean you start cross-posting when you post on one, it automatically goes to the other. They're asking for you to link up to a Facebook page just to verify um, the, the business. Um, and it, it's just more for a, a back-end verification uh, thing, really. This is a completely free process to do. And I would really recommend that you take the time to ensure that it is set up as a business profile. It will make life so much easier for you moving forwards. Once you've got your account switched to a business uh, account, it's then time to look at the profile itself. I've got an example here of a, of a business. Uh, so this is a company, the Conqueror Challenges. They uh, do virtual uh, running challenges, distance running challenges. Um, and so example here of how they've set up and optimized their profile. 
So the profile is the bit uh, of your account that people see when they tap on your username, come through to your profile. What do they see at the top there? Well, the first thing, of course, is going to be the profile picture. The image is in the top left. So in this instance, it's their Conqueror logo. Business logo, that's a really good thing to have in your profile photo. Remember that the profile photo is going to be next to every single piece of content that you post. And it's going to be next to every single comment that you make on other people's posts. It will, however, always be next to your username. So do bear that in mind. So for example, if your logo is a shape of some kind, and then your company name is a line of text alongside, your profile photo only needs to be that shape because your username is always going to be next to that photo. And if your username is your company name, then your company name is always going to be linked to that shape element uh, of your logo. If you try and get that line of text in as well, then your whole logo is going to be really, really small within the middle of this profile photo. You then have your username. So your username in this instance is that line at the very top there, uh, the underscore conqueror underscore challenges. Your username is unique to you. So if your company is called John Smith Limited, well, I'm sorry to say that at John Smith is probably already taken. Um, so it does need to be something that, that is unique to you. Ideally, if this can be the same as your username on Facebook, on Twitter, that's going to help you because it means that you can just say to people, find me on social media at business. It makes it easy for you to advertise all of your different social media channels if you can kind of keep it consistent. Underneath that, uh, you then have your display name. So here in this example, it's that bold uh, line there, the Conqueror Challenges just underneath the numbers. That's your display name. So that doesn't have to be unique to you, but that just sits at the top of your profile there. So again, it could be your company name again. Some people actually use it as a way to really focus on um, who they are. It's kind of like a, a mini tagline almost. So they ha have their username as their business name, and then their display name as the best hair salon in Birmingham. Try it out, try different things out, see what looks right for you. The important thing is that your company name is present uh, in at least one of those, preferably the username. You then got your biography. So there's a couple of lines underneath that. The biography is the about you section. And this is really the only space that you have to generally say, hello, this is who I am. Best advice I can give you with a bio is that your biography should essentially serve as a contents page. It should set and manage expectations. These are the kind of things that you are going to see in my Instagram profile. So for example, on my Instagram profile, I talk about how I'm a craft beer enthusiast, uh, aspiring distance runner, and social media trainer. And that's the order I put it in. And that's kind of the weighting of the content that you see. Most of the content you see is about craft beer, occasionally a post about running, and then occasionally uh, the odd post about social media as well. But the bio kind of almost sets and manages the, um, sets and manages the, the expectations uh, of what people are gonna find in your profile. Underneath your bio, you then have your web URL. Now, this is a really, this is, this is a sticking point. Uh, a lot of people hate about Instagram is the fact that you can't have web links in your individual posts. If you put a web URL in a piece of content that you're posting, that's not clickable. It's not tappable. People have to kind of type it out themselves. This web URL here is basically the only point that you can have a URL until you get to 10,000 followers. Once you get 10,000 followers, you can add uh, web links into your Instagram stories content. But up until that point, this is the only URL. So a lot of people will go with just the homepage to their website. There are other tools available that can help though. One of my favorite is something called Linktree. Linktree is a tool that allows you to essentially set up a, a mini landing page. 
So your URL that you put here will be linktree forward slash business. And then when people click on that link, it goes through to basically a mini menu page. And in there, you can have links to latest products, uh, to your charity campaign, uh, to your latest blog. You can control the links that go there. That then means that when you're posting content and you post this content saying, oh, I've got a new uh, blog article, check it out, link in bio. You can then add that blog link into your link tree. And so someone sees that goes link in bio, okay. They tap on the link in bio, they're taken to that mini menu, that link tree menu page where they'll see latest blog article. And it means that that thing that you posted two days ago about a new product where you said link in bio, that still remains correct and accurate as well. Linktree is free to sign up for, uh, so do check that out as well. Um, but yeah, it's just a really easy way to make it easier for people to navigate to your profile, to, to individual pieces of content that you want them to see. Then underneath that, you've got these row of circles. These are your stories highlights. Let's put a pin in those. We're going to come back to stories uh, in just a moment. Uh, but this is where you kind of showcase uh, your stories, past stories, content that you've posted, and you can choose how you categorize it. But before we come on to stories, let's talk about the main kind of content. The main content that we see on Instagram is our feed content. So this is the stuff when you open Instagram, you've got that main feed. These are your main posts. This is what Instagram originally was. This is all Instagram was once upon a time. Feed content consists of single images, single videos up to 60 seconds, or a collection of up to 10 images and videos that a user can then side scroll through. And this is called a carousel. So you can upload multiple images to a single post, then the user is able to then scroll through to look at all of them. So for example, if you were a, um, a bakery and you wanted to show people the step-by-step -step process you go through in baking a loaf of bread, you could have that in a series of images and you upload that as one carousel post. You have accompanying that a text caption. So that text caption, if you're looking uh, on desktop, that text caption appears to the right-hand side of the image. If you're browsing on mobile, the text caption comes underneath. When you're browsing through Instagram and you're scrolling through that newsfeed, you'll notice that almost all the time, whenever you see a caption, you'll see the start of the caption and then it will, the rest of the caption will be hidden and there'll be a see more button and you have to tap that to expand it to see more. It's the first two lines that are above that see more button. That's it. The first two lines are shown above the see more button. The rest is hidden underneath. My advice is to format and structure your captions so that you have those first two lines and then a line break. So you have a single sentence as kind of like the, the headline for your caption and then a line break. So, that, so essentially what that means is when someone's scrolling through the newsfeed and they see your post, they'll see that opening sentence as a complete sentence and then see more. If you just have a single block of text, then there's a risk that the caption will say, will be about halfway through a sentence before the see more button comes in. So it will say, oh, I'm really excited to be back in Birmingham. Check out my brand new, because you've got that see more is kind of interrupting mid-sentence. Whereas if you put that line break in, so the opening sentence, those first two lines is separate from the rest of it, you'll have a clean break uh, and it will make it more appealing to people as they're scrolling through. You can tag people uh, in your posts, of course. So if you're doing a collaboration uh, with another business or other users, or you want to thank someone, you can tag them in the photo. And you can also tag your individual products as well using Instagram shopping, which is something we'll look at very, very shortly. 
You can post via mobile or you can now post via the desktop as well. And again, I'm going to show you how you can do that very shortly as well. So as our main feed, we also have Instagram stories. So Instagram stories is portrait content. It's portrait content that is there for 24 hours and then it is deleted by default. It can be still images, it can be videos, or it can just be text. It can just be text over a colored background. You've got complete creative control over this. There's a whole load of different filters and stickers and all sorts of things that you can do. So three examples you can see on the screen here. The one on the left hand side, um, it tags another Instagram account in it. So I could tap on that tag and go through and look at their profile. And then it's a still image. The one in the middle has a poll in it. So you can add these polls. Yes, no, A, B, you choose the answers. And as that comes up, people can tap on their preferred answer and you can then see the results. So you could maybe be experimenting with two different colors. Which do you prefer, the blue or the green? And you can get your community, get your audience to vote uh, and kind of go through, uh, you can kind of involve them in your process, especially if you're kind of developing new products. You can also add all sorts of GIFs and animated GIFs. Obviously you can't see it moving uh, here in this example, but that one on the right, there's an animated GIF there of someone doing a little dance. You can have a lot of fun with this content. The great thing about it is because it only lasts for 24 hours, it can be a bit rougher around the edges. And I think people almost expect that. It can be used as a behind the scenes. And I see a lot of businesses doing this really, really effectively. Their main feed is where polished content goes, professionally uh, taken photos, high quality images, very carefully sculpted on brand. That goes onto the main feed. And stories is almost a behind the scenes, slightly rough, slight, uh, slight, yeah, slightly kind of, kind of rough around the edges, not 100% on brand, but it's that personable connection. That's what's being created there. What you can also do is once you've posted something to stories, if you go back and view it, you can then save a story to highlights. So if you want it to stay there on your profile, you can save it to your highlights. And as I said, you can then control what the highlights are. Now, what I've seen some businesses do really effectively is create different highlights for different categories of products and services. So it might be if you are a fashion uh, outlet, you might have uh, tops, hats, shoes, bags. And when you post a story that's about shoes, you save that to the shoes highlight. When you post something about hats, it goes to the hats highlight. When someone leaves a testimonial, you might share that to your reviews highlight. You've got control over that and you can add and remove things to highlights uh, over time. As a concept, as a platform, Stories is massively, massively growing in popularity. Um, more on that uh, in a moment. But if you're not using Stories already, then I really would encourage you to start experimenting with it. To post to Stories, all you do is you tap that camera icon right in the top left. That will open up the camera and then you can start taking pictures or pressing and holding to record video and post to Stories. So those are the two main forms of content on Instagram. We do have other forms as well, though. So we have got IGTV. So IGTV is a long form video uh, content platform. So it's within Instagram. It launched a couple of years ago. Wasn't the most successful of launches, we'll be honest. Um, but it is a way in which you can share longer form content with news feed, with main feed content, your video is limited to 60 seconds. With IGTV, you've actually got a maximum cap of 15 minutes, 60 minutes if you're uploading via desktop. It's optimized for portrait. So it was designed with portrait video content in mind, but it is possible to upload landscape, if you wanted to. I've seen some examples in the past of people filming for both IGTV and YouTube, and they've ended up getting two phones, one landscape, one portrait, and almost taping them together 
uh, and hit and record on both of them so they can film both portrait and landscape at the same time. You don't quite need to go to those extremes. Uh, you can upload landscape content if you want to. If you only run any live broadcasts via stories, so that's something else you can do via stories, you can run lives, you do have the option once that live broadcast is finished to then save that live broadcast to your IGTV. It will also be posted to your main feed. So if you upload something to IGTV, it will be shared as a main feed post as well. When you first create an IGTV recording, um, it will create an extra tab in your profile. So people are going to be able to navigate to those uh, directly. As I said, it um, is a concept, a tool that's been around for a while now, wasn't massively popular when it first came out. I think, to be honest, long form video creators weren't quite ready for the concept of portrait video when it came out. But it's it's trundling along, shall we say. It's I don't necessarily think it's going to be massive anytime soon, but some people find it really useful. They need, if they do interviews, they go in depth on things. They need a way to kind of talk and present for more than 60 seconds at a time. IGTV can be a useful uh, tool there. When you post it, the same with main feed posts, you have that caption. So those rules, that, that, that guidance about the, two, the opening line, I definitely uh, stick to that with IGTV as well. And then we have Reels. Reels is the, the new kid on the block. Reels is the new form of social uh, of content on Instagram. Easiest way to describe it is it's TikTok. It's TikTok, but on Instagram. If you've not used TikTok before, well, the easiest way to describe it in that case is Reels is 15 second video clips. You create them by going in the same way as if you were to create stories. So you tap on that camera icon in the top left hand corner of the app, and then you switch the menu at the bottom from stories to reels, and that will take you into the reels creator. And a reel is 15 seconds long, but it's not necessarily one single video. It can be if you want it to be, or it can be a series of short clips. So you could record a two second clip there, and then a four second clip there, and a three second clip there, and you can record those different clips and it stitches them together. You've got full editorial control, so you can trim those different clips, make it all fit. Uh, you can add external audio as well. So you can add music and Instagram links up with Spotify. So you can actually put in music that's on Spotify. You can put that in there. So latest chart music, um, Christmas songs, Gregorian chants, whatever you want to add, you can add that music in there to give it a background, or you can kind of record the audio as you record the video. Again, just like um, IGTV, it will create a new tab on your profile when you first create a reel. Because Reels is so new, Instagram is really, really keen to promote it. So accounts that are using Reels, they are getting a lot of exposure for it. So if you can think of ways to use Reels, then it would be something that I would encourage you to do. So those are the different types of content. Those are the different um, ways in which we can post to Instagram. But you potentially sat there wondering uh, uh, one key thing. That's all good and well, but how do I turn this into something that's going to make money? How am I actually going to turn this into something that's going to reach new customers? engage with them and get them to purchase and engage with my business. Well, I've got five tips here, five tips that I'm gonna run through now and share with you that will help you to start turning your Instagram feed from something that's just posting nice content to something that is actively going to start generating results and business for you. After that, I'll be taking your questions. We've got a couple of questions already, uh, but do feel free to use that chat box if you do have any questions. But tip number one, hashtags. Use hashtags. Hashtags are labels. They are filters uh, that we add to our content. When you use a particular hashtag, you're telling people what that content is about, and you're telling Instagram what that content is about. Instagram's smart. 
it is a really intuitive platform and it will look at the hashtags that you use in your own content and it will look at the hashtags in pieces of content that you like and interact with and it will show you content based on the stuff that you interact with so for example a couple of years ago uh, around Christmas time, I had a advent calendar that was all miniatures uh, of different whiskies. It's an advent calendar for the evening, not the morning. Um, and so I was posting every single day for a month using things like hashtag whiskey, hashtag scotch, all of these hashtags. Now, a lot of people on Instagram who use those hashtags also talk about cigars. Now, personally, I don't smoke. I have no interest in cigars. But Instagram saw that I was using hashtag whiskey a lot and it went, ah, lots of people that use that hashtag also like that. So we're going to show you some content from people about cigars. So if we think about it as a business, let's reverse engineer this. Use hashtags in your content. Use hashtags relating to your, your sector, your industry, your business, whatever it is that you do, because Instagram will show that content to people engaging with the relevant hashtags. It's important to use them. You can have up to 30 hashtags in your posts. I would recommend trying not to exceed more than a dozen, 15 or so, simply because if you go for the full 30, it's going to be a bit in someone's face, it could put them off uh, engaging. So have a bit of a look around, do some research, find different hashtags. We want some hashtags that are really popular because those are the key conversations, but also use hashtags that are a bit quieter, that are maybe 20, 30, 50,000 uses rather than the 10 million uses hashtags. Whenever you search for a hashtag, it will tell you how many uses of that tag there has been but use some of the quieter ones as well, because then your content will stay at the top of those search results for longer. As well as using hashtags in your content, search for hashtags as well. If you are um, developing a fitness app, then search for hashtag fitness app and engage with other people talking about fitness apps. Engage with people using similar hashtags to you. Be part of the community. Don't just sit on Instagram and broadcast out to people and expect you to get lots of business. If you take the time to interact with other people's profiles, to like posts, to comment and say, wow, that looks great. People will appreciate that. They'll have a look at your profile and they'll want to engage with you. It's about developing relationships and having two way engagement. Tip number two. Frequency, something I get asked about more than anything. How often should I be posting to Instagram? The guidance from Instagram themselves is that with your main feed, your main feed content, you should be looking anywhere between two to five posts per week as a starting point. It could be that actually posting more frequently than that works for you. You just need to be careful that you don't over post. And that is a thing, over posting. If you post to your main feed four or five times in one day, Instagram's not going to show all of that content to your followers. It's going to pick one. And so by posting four or five times in a day, you're actually creating competition for your own content. So try and limit yourself to maybe just one or two posts per day maximum on your main feed. Stories, meanwhile, Go for it. If you can keep it so that you have something in your stories near enough all the time, that's a really great, great position to be in. Because when someone opens Instagram, stories come across at the top. As you can see in that image on the left hand side there, stories are at the top. So stories are often the first thing that people see. Now, I have a test experiment version of Instagram uh, where they test out different features and things. And the screen on the right is an example of what Instagram looked like at one point for me. They are experimenting the idea of enabling you to view a full page of stories. Instagram believes that stories could become the dominant form of content on the platform by next year. 
So they're experimenting in ways to make it easier for people to consume more and more stories content. So post as frequently as you can with stories, but try not to oversaturate and overpost to your main feed. To number three, plan your time. Make time for looking after social media and protect that time. Don't let social media become that thing that you do only when you have a spare five minutes. Ring fence and protect that time. It could just be half an hour a week. I have seen it be done where people manage their social media on as little as half an hour a week. They spend about 15 minutes at the start of the week planning their content out. And then the rest of that is two or three minutes every day, four or five minutes, just checking in and responding to comments. It is possible, but you've got to protect and ring fence that time. Now, there is a tool available that can help. Facebook Creator Studio, and you get to it by going to business.facebook.com forward slash creator studio. It's free to use. It does require you having your Instagram account set as a business or creator profile. So another reason to switch it. But with Creator Studio, you are able to not only post to Instagram from desktop, but you're also able to schedule your content. So you can upload the post, you can write the caption and say, I want this to go out at Friday at quarter past four. I want this to go out Sunday morning. That means you can sit there on a Monday or Tuesday at the start of the week and you go, right, what am I posting this week? And you can plan out all of your content. You can do this with your main feed and with IGTV. You can't post to stories using Creator Studio at this time, but I have been reliably informed that that functionality is on its way. So Creator Studio allows you to do that. Creator Studio also allows you to schedule all your Facebook content as well. So Facebook and Instagram all in one place. There's also a button on Creator Studio called the Inbox, Inbox Plus. And within that, you get all of your private Facebook messages, your private Instagram DMs, the comments on your Facebook posts and the comments on your Instagram posts. It all comes into one space and you can respond, interact and reply to all of it from that one space. Really powerful tool. And as you build your audience and you become more popular and you get more followers and more interaction, it's only going to save you more and more time. So do have a look at that. Just go to business.facebook.com forward slash creator studio. You log in with your normal Facebook login details. It does the rest and it will make life a lot easier for you for staying on top of managing your interactions as well as posting content. It means that when you say, right, this is my half an hour of social media work, you could just go to that one dashboard and get it all done. Number four, use stories. It's kind of an almost an extension to tip number two, but do, do use stories. As I say, Instagram believe that stories will become the dominant form of content uh, on the platform within the next 12 months. It's a great way to engage with people. People typically look at stories before they look at the main feed. So do make use of stories. This app here, Mojo, is a brilliant app. Uh, it's a free app. There's free and a paid version of it, but even the free app is brilliant. It is a template creator for your stories. So it has a whole load of different templates uh, and animations and movements and transitions and text boxes. And you basically just drag and drop the photos that you want to use into these templates. And it means that your stories, rather than just being a static image of your product, it appears on the screen, it's animated, it kind of merges in, you can have two images sliding across the screen, sliding over each other. You can then add text that appears in an animated way rather than just being a block text there. As I say, free to use. There are some premium uh, templates within there. Premium's not that expensive if you find it really useful, but it's a simple tool to help you give your stories that extra flair uh, that extra that extra kick that will help them to stand out. So do use stories. Then finally, Instagram shopping. So this is relevant to you if you are a, a business that sells products uh, of any kind. 
and that Instagram has massively developed its shopping functionality. Got an example here of a brilliant brand, uh, a company called Vent. Uh, they produce uh, environmentally sustainable, environmentally friendly stationery. Um, and on their Instagram profile, they have a big button that says view shop. And you tap on that and it takes you through and it shows you a whole load of products. And then you can tap on any one individual product and there'll be a button there that says buy now. You tap on that and it will take you through to that product on their website so you can purchase it. It also means by having the shopping enabled that when they post something to their, their main feed or to their stories, they can tag products. So you can see this example here on the right hand side, a picture they've uploaded to their main feed and we can see what that product is. It's the blue notebook. And again, we can tap on that tag, shows us the product and a button to then go and buy. So it makes it much, much easier for users to, to find out more about products and to buy them. In order to enable Instagram shopping, you need to have Facebook shop turned on. So Instagram pulls this information from Facebook. Another reason for them to all be linked up. So as long as your Instagram shop is set up, you can go into your menu, into your settings on Instagram and enable shopping, and you'll then be able to start tagging your products and it will automatically then create your shop based on the products that you tag in Instagram posts. In order to create your shop on Facebook, it will depend on how you're set up. On Facebook, you can either manually upload, uh, upload individual products uh, to a shop, or if you use something like Shopify or WooCommerce, you can actually link up your Facebook page with Shopify and it will automatically update and populate the shop. Shopping tools on Facebook, it's a whole other subject that is, uh, but do keep an eye out, as I said earlier, on the Enterprise Nation, She Means Business site. Uh, do keep an eye out for any talks, webinars about uh, the Facebook shop functionality if you do need a bit of extra help and support in developing that. But in order to use Instagram shop, you need to have Facebook shop turned on. Instagram is playing with something called Instagram Checkout. This is something that is for the future, it's not here yet, but Instagram Checkout will actually enable users to complete the entire transaction whilst on Instagram. So you'll be able to see the product and go, yep, I want that, buy. Instagram holds your card details, your delivery address. Instagram then processes that payment, sends the information through to the business. So do keep an eye out for that. They're testing it in the US at the moment. Could be a huge game changer for small businesses in terms of getting their products out there and driving sales in the near future. So there we have five quick, uh, five quick tips there, just to run through everything we've been through. We've gone through a lot of information over the course of the last uh, 50 minutes or so. But what are the key success? What is your checklist uh, for success for unlocking Instagram for your business. Well, first, make sure your profile is converted into a business account. Then take the time to optimize your profile. Make sure that your bio serves as a content page. Explain to people what to expect from you. Make sure you've got that web link set up. Try experimenting with Linktree as well. Have a go with all four content types, main feed, stories, IGTV and Reels. Have a play around with them all. They may not all be for you. You may not get along with Reels. You may not really have anything that's appropriate for IGTV. That's fine. The important two are main feed and stories. Those are the main two to be thinking about. But do have a play around with the others as well. Get into a routine for posting content. Use Creator Studio to help you to manage your time effectively, to pre-plan, to schedule. Think about what's sustainable for you. Don't make a commitment to posting four times a week if actually you've only got enough content to post twice a week. Think carefully about what's sustainable for you over a six month period and start at that. Better to be at a lower level but consistent than to start at a higher level and then drop down. Use extra tools, things like Mojo, um, to find out, to, to, um, to enhance the quality of your content as well. And most importantly, make sure that, a, um, make sure that a, there is a call to action present as well. 
Make it very clear. Don't be afraid to say, check this out on my website. Use the shopping tool to highlight products or just have a, a call to action in your caption that says, check out the link in bio for more information. Couple that up with using Linktree uh, and you can then make it easier uh, for people to navigate specific parts of your website. I'll give you guys a few, a few moments. Uh, if you have any questions, we've got some questions already. If you have any other questions, do pop them uh, in, the, uh, in the chat box. Come to them very shortly. I just want to mention one thing, cheeky plug time. Uh, but we at JC Social Media have got a book about Instagram coming out later this month. Instagram Rules, uh, written by RMD Jody Cook, uh, is out. And it is the essential guide to building brands, businesses and communities. It features interviews uh, with some big brands, brands like, uh, like Ben & Jerry's. There's all sorts of interviews uh, in their hints, tips and tricks to really help you get the most out of your Instagram profile. We do have a pre-order uh, bonus available. I'm just going to share a button with you now. Uh, you should see that uh, this come up now. You should see a button come up uh, to pre-order. If you pre-order and you follow the information uh, that's on there, you'll get access to some bonus webinars uh, around Instagram and imagery, some extra interviews that didn't quite make the final cut uh, of the book and exclusive access to a launch uh, day Q and A uh, with Jody. That book's coming out on the twenty seventh of October, um, so do click that button uh, to find out a bit more information about that. Um, I've got some questions that have come in. Uh, thank you very much for sending these in. Uh, hello, can you explain the characteristics for a creator profile? I find it confusing with the business profile. Yeah, absolutely. Really good question. In terms of the functionality, there's not a huge amount of difference between them. A creator profile has all of the analytics tools. Um, you can use Creator Studio with uh, a creator profile as well. The kind of the fundamental difference is that creator profiles are designed for individual people who are influencers. So, for example, I in the past have done some content when I've promoted individual breweries. A brewery has sent me a beer to review and I've reviewed it. So the creator profile it has some tools in there that make it easier for you to connect and kind of flag content as being paid partnership uh, content with a brand. It is very much designed for individual people, personal name, personal face, whereas business profiles are kind of designed for, um, for, for businesses. Creator profile came after and was kind of to plug a gap for people that wanted access to things like insights and analytics, but they weren't a business. So that's what the creator profile uh, does. If you are a business, you're better off going with a business profile. Uh, do you think people view more of Insta stories and actually go through uh, the main feed? Uh, again, kind of, as I said uh, earlier, um, yeah, I, I think they do. I think there is this growing trend that when people open Instagram, the first thing they do is they browse through uh, the stories and they'll look through half a dozen stories or so before they're maybe scrolling through the main feed. So there is definite value in posting to stories and posting regularly so you do come up at the top there. Will this talk be available to access afterwards? Yes, it will. The session has been recorded. So uh, if you have missed anything or need to kind of view back, uh, you will get uh, a link through from Birmingham Tech Week later with uh, some uh, with details on how you can access that recording. Um, I, I want to verify my account with a blue tick, but I keep getting rejected. Uh, it's a difficult thing, verification uh, right now. Um, it's something that basically you need to be able to demonstrate that you are at risk of being impersonated, that you are a significant brand, you're a big brand, people have tried to impersonate you before, and that there is a need for you to be identified as being the authentic account. Facebook, Instagram, even Twitter, they've been quietly playing around and working out how to make the verification process better. Um, and that's an ongoing process. So unfortunately, if you keep getting rejected at the moment, there's not a huge amount you can do at this stage, but do keep an eye out for announcements uh, because they will be bringing out some new verification processes uh, in the near future. Hi, how do I increase my followers organically? Engagement, 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 engagement. Search for the hashtags, 
that you use in your content. Every time you post something, tap on one of those hashtags that you've used, look at other people's content, like and comment. Be an active contributor to the community, engage with other people, and that will then uh, result in people going, oh, who's this person that's like my post, that's commented on my post? They come and look at your profile, and if the content's good, they'll decide to follow. So it is about taking that time, five minutes here, five minutes there. If you can pledge you know, 10, 15 minutes a day to liking and commenting on stuff, you will see a dramatic increase in your followers. Um, in the business profile section where you choose your category, what if you fall into two areas? I'm struggling to choose between editor and coach as I do both. It is frustrating. It really is frustrating. Um, the best advice I can uh, kind of give you is think about kind of what you're looking to use Instagram for. Are you going to be leaning a bit more towards one side of what you do over the other? If so, that should be the category that you go with. It's not the end of the world. So if you choose editor, it, it mean it's not necessarily a bad thing for the coaching side of what you do. It's a relatively minor thing. Just make sure that your bio clearly explains that you do both. It shouldn't be restricting your content, though. Um, how do you convert to a business Instagram account? Check back the recording. We did. Kind of, we went through that at the very start. Uh, you may have missed it. Uh, but we um, we go through that at the start. So if you just uh, check out the recording, um, you will um, be able to to catch up on that. In terms of uploading to IGTV, um, you two ways in which you can do that. You can either upload uh, via um, your uh, via Creator Studio, or if you go through the process as if you were uploading a normal Instagram post. When you select the video, it'll kind of recognize that as being an IGTV post and switch over for you. Can we sign up for a Creator Studio account if we only use Instagram for business, but we don't use Facebook? Uh, you will need to have some kind of uh, Facebook presence. So even if you've just got a Facebook page that exists, but you don't use it, you'll need to have that because your Instagram account needs to be linked to a Facebook page. So if you don't use Facebook at all, you'll need that page doesn't matter if it's not active, you'll just need it as like a, as an anchor point for your Instagram account. Time for a couple more questions. Uh, thank you very much for all of these. Uh, is Instagram effective for B2B? Absolutely. A lot of people think that Instagram is a B2C platform, uh, not a B2B platform. Um, but people are increasingly using Instagram as their as their default platform, as their go-to thing. The thing that I always say is that the people that you target when you're doing B2B marketing, they are consumers as well. I may not necessarily use Instagram to talk about social media a lot, but it's still an interest of mine. And if of an evening I'm browsing through my Instagram feed, looking at pictures of beer, and I see something about a new social media analytics tool, if it interests me, I'll save it. I'll make a note to look at it the next day. As I said earlier as well, a lot of B2B brands can use uh, Instagram really effectively to showcase um, their work environment and workplace culture and their core values as well. Um, I've seen some uh, work with some big businesses where the Instagram account is essentially managed by the HR department and it's used as an employee recruitment tool more than anything. But yes, absolutely, B2B can work on Instagram. I'd like to ask where, when first starting out, uh, start, when first starting our page, is it better to post uh, five, 10 photos at once and then start connecting with other users so they can have a look at our content? Or is it better to start with posting one photo per day, as you said? Um, I would have a couple of posts set up, I, you know, at least uh, th between three and six posts kind of there. Now, whether those are individual photo posts or carousel posts is up to you. That doesn't make a huge difference. If you're short on content, it may be wiser to do single posts so you can space it out. But as you say, have something there for people to look at uh, before uh, they, you know, to help them decide whether or not they want to follow. Can you please talk more about Instagram paid ads through Facebook Business Center? Unfortunately, not today. Uh, that's a huge topic in itself. Um, but there is a whole uh, load of other talks and resources available. Again, head to enterprise nation 
youtube.com forward slash she means business there are resources there that will be able to tell you a bit more but unfortunately we don't have time to kind of go through that in detail today do you think business will ever move on from instagram as we did from facebook that's a really good question that that, that is a a proper 10 o'clock at night with a glass of scotch the, uh, deep question there thank you for that one i don't know I honestly don't know. I remember at one point thinking that uh, Instagram was a fad and that it will go away in no time at all. And that was in 2012. Look at us now. Um, there's always going to be something new that comes along, something that offers something different. The interesting thing about what Facebook and Instagram combined do is that they're in a position now where they often mimic the new features that come along. Instagram stories and Instagram reels are both examples of this. The question will be, when, when will there be a point where something comes along that can't be mimicked on Instagram? And that's the point, I think, where people will then start to move on. But we will have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see what the future holds. But certainly for the next few years, Instagram should be a key part of your strategy uh, on social media. Well, that is it, that is all we've got time for. We've overrun slightly, but thank you everyone for sticking around and having some fantastic questions there. My name has been David Glenwright from JC Social Media. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Old Man Glenners, uh, or you can follow us uh, 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 at JC Social Media, not on Instagram, but you can find us on Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, and Twitter as well at JC Social Media UK. Thank you once again for joining us uh, as part of Birmingham Tech Week. I do hope you're enjoying the week and that you're signed up for some more sessions. Do go to the Birmingham Tech Week website uh, to see what else is happening. And I hope to be able to see you know, the great content that you post on Instagram very, very soon. Thanks very much, guys, for joining us. Have a fantastic day. Thank you and goodbye.